In this video, I'm gonna show you how to properly install flashing for a skylight on your tile roof. We've got this skylight curb built out. I'm gonna show you how to properly flash around it. Now, remember the concepts of these flashings remain the same, whether it's a curb mount, deck mount skylight, or a chimney or roof to wall joint. We're gonna be using these same flashings. Now, we're gonna be installing these flashings. The last thing that needs to be done after the flashing gets installed is just installing the skylight on top. So regardless of what type of flashing you're using, this is an example for a curb mount, regardless of the brand of flashing. Let's get into it. Now the first thing we wanna start off is installing our tile pan. Now depending on how your tile is laying out will determine the exact length of the tile. Now you always wanna go 14 inches past the top of your chimney or skylight. Now on the bottom side, you wanna come down and depending on how it's situated, right here what we're gonna do is make sure we come on top of this tile. The whole idea is any water that comes inside this tile pan, we wanna direct it back on top of this tile right here. So we're pretty much gonna come three inches above that's right above the exposure line. So this is three inches right here, so that our tile is gonna cover over it. We're not gonna see the bottom of this tile pan, however, we're gonna achieve the water coming back on top of this tile. So I'm gonna hold this in place, and we're gonna mark out this line right here. And what we wanna do is cut it a half inch. Essentially the same lip that we have here, we wanna have it on this side in order to make sure the water gets diverted to where we want it to go. All right, you can see what Marco's done here is leave a half inch to an inch lip right here that we're gonna bend over. And that's gonna tie in perfect with our flashing here on this head wall. Now on this top side, what we also have to do is fabricate this flashing right here. So on this top side here, I'm gonna mark out where our top wall stops. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this at a 45 degree angle, bend it down. And we wanna make sure we do that so that we tie that together with our saddle that we're gonna install on the top side here. So you can see we just made a 45 degree angle right here. We've made a 45 degree cut. And once I put that into place, I'm gonna bend this into the directions that I want it to go. This is gonna be sitting on the top side of that saddle wall and the saddle will come sit on top of here. And I'll show you later how to properly tie that in to make sure we have a nice solid joint. There you go, we have our tile pan cut and ready to install. Now one thing you want to make sure is you don't have any nails in this channel. So what we do is we fabricate these clips in order to install this tile pan down. This clip right here is a field fabricated clip. You can use really any metal that is similar to your tile pan. So if you're using galvanized tile pan, you want to use galvanized clips. And what this does is it holds it down tight enough in place so that it doesn't shift. However, it doesn't make any holes in this tile pan right here. Generally, we like to install these clips every 12 to 16 inches on center. It's not super crucial because really that tile is going to hold it down as well as tacking this up here. However, this just helps it to keep it down during installation. Now we're ready to install the tile. Before we do so, one thing that's extremely crucial to remember is you always want to make sure that this lip is bent up. You never want to have this limp flattened out. What that would do is any water that comes in here, it'll risk it going out of this channel. So we just wanna make sure that we have this channel clear, open, free of any penetrations, with at least a minimum of half inch lips on both sides for the water to go down. All right, now we're ready to install this tile. Again, one thing you always wanna be careful of is never bending this lip. And what we wanna do is actually notch this tile. So you can see we're placing it down here. Now, this lip, you can see how it's standing up. The tile is not sitting properly due to this lip. So we pretty much want to just make a mark in here. You can either use a grinder to create a notch here to create a channel, or you can just use your hammer.
You can see what we've, done. we've created a little notch here in order for that to sit. Now we might need a little bit more. And actually what we'll do is we'll use a grinder to create a groove right here. Now every tile is a little bit different. Some tiles have thicker backing, some tiles are just easier to break, but the concept is the same. Make sure that your tile doesn't bend down your tile pan. And again, we're not putting any nails in the tile pan, so make sure you're nailing outside of that. Okay, so you can see we've got this tile cut down to size. You don't need to be perfectly all the way butted up against here. You can leave a quarter to half inch gap. Now again, one thing we want to be sure of, we're not nailing in this hole right here. We don't want to nail through the tile pan ever. What we want to do is just create a hole right here. Let's say you had the tile installed here and you had a small strip you still don't nail this down. What we want to do at that point is cut that narrow strip of tile down and actually glue it, whether caulking or mastic, we just glue it on this lip. It's a lot better for that tile to fall out because really this tile right here is not doing anything as far as waterproofing goes. It's just aesthetics to cover up this tile pan. If we were to leave the roof as is, it would still not leak because all this water would get in here and travel off our roof. So we don't want to make holes here. If you do have small strips, use glue and adhesive to fasten it down instead of nails. Now that we've got this tile pan installed, prior to continuing, I want to show you the purpose behind it. So again, even if we don't have tiles here, any water that's going underneath here is coming out the other end. Alright, now before we install our head wall flashing, what we call a 110 middle, that 90 degree piece of metal that gets installed here, what we want to do is first install a row of tiles, then install our flashing on top of that. So I'm going to get started with installing these tiles, and I'll show you how to install that flashing. Now that we've got our bottom row installed, we're ready to install our 110 metal. Now, 110 metal is what we call this piece of flashing. It comes up two inches and goes across six. Essentially sits up here and ensures that all the water flows on top of the tiles. Now you can, instead of using a six inch flashing, you can also use four. The important thing is you want to cover these nails right here and pass them by two, three inches. So for this demonstration, we're going to use a six inch. And what I'm going to do is fabricate this in such a way to tie it into our tile pan right here. I'm going to bring it about an inch and a half over. Mark it out here. So one thing I've done, rounded off these corners. This is just for aesthetics and also prevents it from lifting up. Now this is what's really important. And I'm gonna use this to tie this into my tile pan. So you can see what happened is this is coming up the wall, the tile pan is coming over that. But you can fit this in a little snug. And we have a nice tight seal right there. Now what I also want to do is fill up this corner right here with some adhesive. And you can see right there. And that's going to stay totally watertight once I put a nail in this. Now depending on whether if this is a chimney skylight or if it's just a head wall, you're going to have some type of counter flashing covering this up and you're done with uh, installing your 110 flashing. I already installed our tile pans on both sides. If you remember, we brought them up about 14 inches or so. And the reason for this is when we're installing our saddle flashing, our saddle flashing comes up 14 inches. So ideally you want your tile pans to come pretty much right around your saddle pan. A little bit more or less does not hurt. And we've already cut this down. You can leave about a quarter inch gap on each side. But what this does is make sure that any water that comes here 
Again, it's going, hitting that lip and traveling down. We don't want water to travel across our roof. We want it to travel down the tile pan and that's what we're gonna use the saddle to direct the water where we want it. So I place this here. The first thing I'm gonna do is mark both ends in order to cut and bend it down. Of course, we don't wanna leave it like this because we don't wanna trap water. We wanna cut these ears off to allow water to go down. So you can see I've cut it all the way down to our marking. However, I have left this lip about an inch and a half to two inches on each side. And what I'm gonna do with this lip is actually bend it down over the saddle. So we've got this in place right now and you can see this lip here is sticking out. So what we wanna do is just gently bend it over. Now the last thing that we have to do is put adhesive, put some caulking back there. I like to use a sheet metal adhesive, so we're gonna put that back here, put this in place, and make sure we have a watertight system. So we really, really wanna focus on this corner here, and come up, and across here diagonal. Now you should do that on both sides, but for this demonstration, I'm just gonna do this one side here. And what you really wanna see is as you're pressing this down, for that adhesive to be coming out of that corner. We've got this corner sealed, so any water that comes on top of the saddle is gonna come, hit this tile pan, and go down the roof. The last thing to do is installing underlayment. Again, we wanna install underlayment in a pattern from bottom to top to make sure that any water that's coming traveling on top of the underlayment is gonna come on top of this flashing and not go underneath. Just like always, anytime we're using a self-adhered underlayment, we wanna prime it first to improve adhesion. All right, now just to install your underlayment, extremely simple. Um, the way I like to do it is leave about a three, four inch gap here on the tile pan. Again, you've got your tile pan coming up 14 inches. So we're not really concerned about this bottom two, three inches. We don't want to leave it exposed to the sun. So just remove the adhesive back in. On this top side, you want to make sure that you lap it properly moving forward. And of course, around chimneys and penetrations, I'm not going to do this right now. Um, but you want to cut this and weave it together as you regularly would. So there you have it. You're ready to pretty much install your tile on top of this. Just keep in mind, you don't want to be installing nails right here in the tile pan. You always want to install nails above about 10 inches at least. You want to leave for water to travel. No nails on your tile pans or your saddles and you'll be good to go. Now that we've got all the flashings installed, really the last step, which I'm not going to be showing in this demonstration, is just installing the tiles all the way around it and the last thing would be popping the skylight on. Now in case you have a flashing detail like ours and the skylight curb flashing is too small to cover these flashings, you would just be installing a counter flashing on top of this, pretty much any flat or L-shaped metal to cover the top of these flashings to get to your skylight. So and it really depends on the type of skylight you're installing and the height of your curb will determine the need of a counter flashing. But for right now, I think this is the basics of it. If you do this, you're gonna have a water tight and waterproof skylight for years to come. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, and do all that good stuff. We have a bunch of other videos for tile, flat tile roof installation tutorials. If we're missing something, let us know and we'd like to fill it up for you. Thanks for watching.